I'm sure most of us, including myself, by the way, fantasize as children about becoming a superhero one day. Well, it turns out that it actually is possible to do just that. Let me give you a few examples. In his book entitled The Social Animal, David Brooks discussed US soldiers who had been to Iraq and Afghanistan on multiple deployments and got to a point, some of them, where they could look down a street just like this and be able to predict with incredible accuracy if there was an IED, an improvised explosive device. They could predict if there was a bomb on that street. That's like magic to me. And the most interesting part is when you ask these soldiers how they did it, they couldn't answer the question they didn't know themselves. They said things like, it felt cold or it felt wrong. It's like magic to me. In his book entitled Blink, Malcolm Gladwell discussed a very well-known tennis coach by the name of Vic Braden. Been coaching and playing tennis for 20, 30, even 40 years. Got to a point where he could watch a tennis match on television and be able to predict with near 100% accuracy if the player was about to double fault, but before the player had even touched the ball. That's like superhuman. But yet again, he went through the video footage afterwards to try to determine the patterns that he was seeing with his eyes to make those predictions, and he could not find those patterns. Or maybe closer to home, any parent can look at her child and know in an instant what she's thinking. And of course, we've all driven on these California freeways and we see a car in front of us in traffic and we know that that car is about to change lanes, but before they've even activated their blinker. We saw something, we didn't know what it was, but we knew that car was about to change lanes and then sure enough, the car changes lanes. These are intuitions. These are intuitions that we develop when we have familiarity with a given situation. So it turns out that the subconscious mind can make roughly 10 million observations in any given setting. Even all of you here today, you've made countless observations, 10 million perhaps. The seat you're sitting in, the people around you, a piece of lint on the floor, a scent in the air, if it's hot or cold, how you feel in different with different thoughts. These are all observations that you're making all the time. But at the same time, your conscious mind can only keep track of about 40. It's incredible. It actually depends on the research. It ranges from 40 to about 150. But let's just use 10 million in this unconscious mind to 100 in the conscious mind to make the numbers easy. That means that 99.999% of the observations you make you're not even consciously aware of. Well, it turns out that there's a lot of research, there's literally been an explosion of research in this area over the past 15 years or so. Under umbrellas like neuroscience and cognitive psychology, uh, behavioral economics, and the scientists who are conducting these studies and doing this research, and also the authors who are writing about this research, tend to focus on Number one, understanding the immense capacity of our unconscious mind. Or two, the implications for companies who are trying to use this information to help them market their products and services more effectively. Or three, how we can in fact protect ourselves from the snap decisions and the snap judgments that we make as a result of these unconscious observations. Right? These intuitions come from the 10 million unconscious observations, not the 100 conscious ones. But those reasons aren't the reasons for my presentation today. The reasons for my presenta presentation today is to use it. Let's leverage it. Let's leverage the capabilities of our unconscious mind and our awareness of how it actually functions to further our own goals and our own aspirations. Adrian de Groot was famous for doing a series of studies in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s around the game of chess. And in one study in particular, he had chess novices and chess masters involved, and in both cases they were shown a chessboard of a chess game halfway in progress, but they were only allowed to see that chessboard for five seconds. Then the curtain went down, and they got a fresh board, and they had to recreate what they saw. And the chess novices, this was, a, this was really a difficult task. 
And they got, on average, four or five, maybe six pieces right. After that, they couldn't remember anymore. But of course, for the chess masters, this was easy because they had the familiarity. They could chunk the information down. They saw this storyline of the game in progress. They saw the strategy of both sides. So for them, it was very easy to recreate what they saw. And so what we learn is that intuition, these intuitions, are in fact a combination of experience and expertise. When you have experience and expertise in a given area, these intuitions, these almost superhuman intuitions, come automatically. So the question is, what's the fastest way to get experience and expertise in a given setting? And the answer to that question is immersion. When you immerse yourself into something, you automatically get that experience and expertise much, much quicker. So intuitively, it makes a lot of sense that if you want to learn French, the best way to do that is to go to France and live there for a period of time. You would learn far more by living in France than by taking French lessons every week for months or even years. Or if you wanted to learn to become a snowboarder, this one's fascinating. If you want to learn to snowboard, you're much better off going five days in a row than going one day every week for five weeks. In both cases, you're on the mountain for five days. But you see, when you do it all in one time, it gives your unconscious mind an opportunity to see those patterns, to organize all that new information and start to understand. You move up that learning curve way, way quicker. And so my challenge to all of you is to take a more active role in your own lives. With this knowledge, Take a more active role and use immersion. In incorporate intentional immersion into your lives in the areas in which you're passionate. Because if you do that, you're going to develop superhuman intuitions that will allow you to advance much, much quicker. And in doing that, you will take one giant step to becoming a superhero of your own. Thank you. <laughs>